So this is the modern cemetery in the small town of Tiwanaku. And at this location we found not only recycled stone from Pumapunku and Tiwanaku, but thousands upon thousands of Tiwanaku culture fine ceramics. So that means that the modern cemetery is built on top of the ancient cemetery of Tiwanaku from the time period of the Tiwanaku people, which is roughly 100 AD to 1000 AD. But Tiwanaku and Pumapunku are much, much older than that. The precise technology examples that we will see show that a civilization existed here long before the Tiwanaku culture and had advanced tools, in some cases more advanced than what we have in the 21st century. Today we are at Pumapunku in the Altiplano of Bolivia once again and the focus of this video is going to be on possibilities of catastrophic damage happening to this site in the very distant past. We're talking more than 12,000 years ago. It's likely that a lot of the damage to the site was done by an ancient cataclysm that came from Lake Titicaca, which is over on my left, and buried this site in a wall or a cascade of mud. And we're also going to be using uh, Tesla meters in order to measure the andesite stone for possible magnetic anomalies. This is an excavation that was done going down two to three feet and all of these stones were found in place and in situ. So the question is what would happen if they dug even deeper, which they so far have refused to do? This is the one, one of the most intriguing stones at Pumapunku. And I'll film the actual stone afterwards. But what we're reading here, this is the base uh, micro Tesla reading of 23 or 24. But as I go in close to the stone, 27, 30, 39, so not much difference. Then it drops down to 17. As I turn the corner, 50, 65, and as I pass by the vertical cut, it's at 100. And then as I pass by that vertical slit, it immediately drops down to base. So this particular spot here is especially magnetic in alignment with the groove. We also took calipers here and these holes, which are all the same diameter, are perfectly spaced. And this groove is perfectly aligned to the edge of this surface going down. And the flatness is believed by some who have measured it to possibly be within two ten thousandths of an inch of being laser perfect. 
you take a look at the um, magnetic needle, it stays horizontal and level here. Uh -huh. But then when you bring it over to this point here, the magnetic field is so strong that it's causing the needle to dip and, and there's an angulation of that needle. So it just kind of gives you some information about the magnetic field that's being generated by this stone. The magnetic field in this one is different. I'm now going to film with the Gauss meter across the face of one of the H blocks. So that's pretty amazing that on the outside left edge of the H block, the Gauss meter was reading over 400. And then when it got into the center of the H block, it went down to like 10, 20, or 30, and then back up and to the right, it goes back up over 400. So is that the nature of the andesite stone itself, or is it the actual shape that is causing this quite dramatic uh, alteration in the magnetometer's registration? So this is the perimeter of um, Puma Punku. And what you have is the first four levels are red sandstone. The, the quarry is eight miles over those mountains. And the red sandstone does not react to the Tesla meter. But then the fifth level is the andesite. And it was going, or is going crazy with the Tesla meter on it. So it's almost like there may have been that the fifth level was like an energetic band that went all the way around the complex. That's news to me. Twelve thousand years ago, this bottom step was where Lake Titicaca rose up to. So is it possible that this ancient staircase, which is so heavily eroded, is in fact the staircase that led to Lake Titicaca, which is now seven miles that way?